My name is Andrew Gettleman. I'm a research scientist at the National Center for Atmospheric Research. And most of my work is concerned either with um, ozone depletion or climate change. Uh, and I analyze satellite data and build uh, models of the atmosphere that are used to simulate future state of climate. They're similar to weather forecast models, but we just run them for very long times. I got interested in um, working on atmospheric sciences and, and weather and climate in particular, I think because I was originally had a, a strong science background but wanted to do something that I thought made a difference um, for people's lives and um, actually mattered for sort of uh, our society and, and I wanted to do, do something that I thought was useful. The research that I do, what we do is we normally will use uh, data that comes from satellites, some of them NASA satellites, some of them other satellites. We'll use uh, weather observations similar to the observations that are used to predict the weather, but over long periods of time. And we will combine that information, we'll analyze it on computers, and we'll um, use that to help build simulations of um, weather and climate states. So you look at weather observations and you think you understand them, you design a, a simulation and run it on a computer and you see if it matches the observations. And then that's how we advance, where it matches the observations or doesn't match the observations, that's how we advance our knowledge. What we hope to achieve in this research is a better understanding of the future direction of where the atmosphere is going given um, what we think is happening to the atmosphere. So given uh, what we know about what um, human inputs are and human effects on the on the climate system in the form of, say, emissions from um, emissions from power plants or emissions from automobiles that stay in the atmosphere, what we hope to do is figure out what that's going to do to the weather and and the climate, which is the long-term average of the weather around us. A lot of the challenges are that you always want to ask a question, which is. Um, a little bit more difficult than your capacity to answer the question. So um, as we get more data, we understand more, but we also ask tougher questions. So we tend to be limited by the quality of the observations, and we tend to be limited by um, our ability to run uh, numerical simulations on computers as fast or as detailed as we want to. The AIRS data is a key link for providing um, observations that pretty much unprecedented um, spatial and time scales over regions of the planet that we've never had observations before. So over places like, even over places like the United States, we only have observations um, that are very sparse. Maybe in a, you know, a couple of, every, every few hundred miles we might have a set of an observation, particularly in the upper atmosphere. And AIRS provides continuous observations everywhere and particularly in places like the tropics and over other regions of the over oceans where it's very difficult to take observations. Satellite data is particularly useful because it, it provides a consistent set of observations everywhere on the planet. So whereas a single observation or a weather station can provide observations at one location, the same satellite instrument can provide observations all over the planet at every location. And that's a real value when you're trying to study uh, and simulate the global system of knowing what the variability is everywhere at every time. What we're doing with the AIRS data um, is very important for the big picture of trying to understand the future of the Earth's climate in particular. Um, what we're doing is we are using the data to try to improve numerical models of the atmosphere. So if we can represent the, very, the, the data now, the observations that we're getting by simulating it on short time scales, we hope that that will enable us to build, use the same models to be able to predict future states of the atmosphere in, say, 10 years or 20 years or 50 years. I work with a wide number of people, both at my institution in Colorado as well as people at NASA in various places, both in all over the United States, and with scientists at other universities and research centers around the world. We work with people all over the world. Uh, in a couple of cases, for example, one of the projects we're working on is we're helping work with people in India who are interested in understanding um, the weather and climate over India and how that affects uh, the atmosphere globally. And we're providing some of the satellite data and some of the model simulations to them and working with them to help better interpret it. And they can help us better interpret the data that we're looking at because they're um, aware of what happens every day under these conditions where they live. In many cases, we're working with people in parts of the world that are underrepresented both in terms of observations and also in terms of scientific capacity. So we've been doing some projects using the data in India um, and also in China, where we're helping provide data and model simulations to people in those countries 
to increase their capacity to understand what's happening in their own region and how it might affect, for example, precipitation in the places where they live. I think our work with people in uh, developing countries, particularly that are developing the sciences, is one way that we can help contribute to helping everybody. Um, weather and climate affect us all, and it's not just in the United States or in developed countries. I think it's important that we take the satellite data, which is taken everywhere and which has applicability for everybody, and see if we can't use it to help better understand other regions of the world and help people in other scientists in other regions of the world do their work better.